diggity dog. Welcome to Wolf Den Podcast, everybody. How y'all doing? I hope everybody's good. I spit all over myself. Will, Will, what might yes, that be that you have there? <laughs> this, this is my kickstarted <laughs> spawn figure that I finally got after months and months of waiting and delays. Uh, you mean, the, you mean the one that you put on the business card so that you can make a video yes. of it? Yes, that and I'm one. Using it yes, in a, I'm using it in a video so that it's still a business expense. Oh, very <laughs> good. I'm very happy. I that was a good investment. Through. I thought this. I thought this through. <laughs> this thing is is freaking ridiculous. By the let, way, let it is, me. I saw your pictures. Yeah, that was only one picture of the figure itself. I didn't show. First of all, I didn't show you the box it came in. It came in two boxes both adorned with spawn branded tape oh not even kidding um and then this is the this is just the slip cover for the box then this is the box see it's got the little spawn logo embossed on it then you pull the tab and then not only do you get a certificate of authenticity of course uh not only do you get a list of the differences between this <laughs> and the original spawn figure because for clarification this is a this is an hd remake of the original 1994 spawn figure uh with modern graphics and controls it's got so much padding this is the figure itself <laughs> uh, move it to, to your right a little bit i don't even know what fell out so that is supposed to be like the cover of the first issue of spawn right no, it's supposed to be an updated version of the original 94 Spawn figure. I don't have it here. But like if you, if you look up the original 94 Spawn figure, it was like five inches tall. It didn't have a lot of articulation. This is fully articulated, has a monstrous cape, <laughs> and it comes with the comic that the original came with and all this extra weapons and crap. It doesn't move very well oh i thought you're gonna say at because all the cape is, because the cape is in the way um but it, it is it is very pretty it, 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 it is, is more a statue it is pretty so whole, well, the whole pitch of the kickstarter is just that they're re-releasing the original spawn figure in a prettier way basically yeah what is cool though is this clamshell opens so you can take the figure out and play with it and then put it back when you're done that's so cute. Oh, that's good. Well, I mean, yeah, because I'm always I always get sad when I open up the packaging of a, of a toy. Yeah, it but, is. But then I don't care. Then I instantly yeah. don't care anymore because uh, I also didn't realize that. So I got though. the I got the version that comes with uh, Todd McFarlane's autograph. Mm -hmm. The reason why I got it was because it comes with an updated version of the original weapon. The original Ooh. figure, the only weapon it came with. Spare no expense, Will. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> the original figure it came with the original figure the weapon it came with was a plank of wood with a nail in it that was the that was the weapon that spawn came with that's and this is awesome the HD remaster i bring back the plank of wood uh and apparently it came with a second head that i now just lost oh that's so, good yeah that's good so but yeah uh i do I do intend on actually doing something with that figure in the not too distant future? I I will do like a video or something with it, but I wanted to show it off here so that it still counts as a Wolf Den business expense. Uh, <laughs> you should absolutely do a video on that. Yeah. Uh, what would so? What do you what do you rate that? Do you think it's uh, a, do you think it's a good toy? Are you disappointed in it? What's going on? Uh, it's hard to tell because it's it's a really nice looking figure but i don't know if i would consider it a toy just because it, the art like it doesn't move very oh, it's well definitely not it, it's to more, be played it's with. more on this it's more on the statue end of right the, of the right but i mean if look if you like spawn uh you're out of luck because the kickstarter is over and it's already going for like 200 dollars on ebay oh my god um, but if you were lucky enough to get it you might be in for a treat. <laughs> yeah, boy says no. it's on Amazon. No, it was a Kickstarter no. thing. It, it was, was a Kickstarter. Yeah, 
I don't know why it was a Kickstarter thing. I remember at Toy Fair, they said it was because the original Spawn line was different from like the way other action figure lines were at the time. They sold directly to the store and the stores were allowed to order one figure at a time. Mm-hmm. Whereas most action figures, you have to buy a box and whatever in the box is what you get. But um, like Sam Goody and Tower Records, may they rest in peace. They just ordered <laughs> one. They can order one figure at a time, whatever figure they needed. And Kickstarter was a way for them to sort of recapture that same mentality of like, this is the figure you want, get it, and we'll send it to you. Um, I'd like to. So, so last night I watched a, I watched a little YouTube video. Uh, I, they they started shipping out the Unicrons. Oh, the we we reported on this a while ago. Yeah, <laughs> uh, over a year ago. Yeah, um, they, Hasbro. What do they call it? They have their own Kickstarter has, type situation. Haslab. Haslab. You can. Yeah. Uh, they, they 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 want to make premium toys, but they want to you know basically kickstart them. So they have their own sort of Kickstarter yeah. called Haslab, and they, they they wanted to make a Unicron, and they made the Unicron. <laughs> this is uh, a yeah. YouTuber Samus ng um and it's freaking massive and it transforms and look at it in its transformed form yeah look at this the, thing. the, the punchline to this story though is ha- hasbro has said that the average transform time is it's like over an hour it's four hours it took them four hours four hours yeah that was it it's four hours so took- in the time it takes to watch Zack Snyder's Justice League, <laughs> you could transform Unicron. This looks freaking amazing, though. It does. I so remember seeing the prototype of it at New York Comic Con. It looks incredible. It also comes with, uh, I don't know if it's a different head altogether or if it's just attachments for the head, but you can make the head destroyed like it is yeah. at the end of the 80s movie. Yeah. Um, absolutely absurd and it comes with a little tiny hot rod and a little tiny ultra magnus yeah like a very very tiny one yeah that would be the scale so this is your next uh this is the next thing you're getting right yeah well the next thing i should have gotten because the the most recent Haslab was um the raven's crest from the mandalorian oh. the mandalorian ship um which sucks because they announced that like in the middle of the Mandalorian season two. And I don't know if you remember what happens at the end of the Mandalorian season two. Right. But the ship blows up. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Well, anyway, that, Oh, scoot. Thanks for the raid. Yeah. I saw you joining us on toy talk. (laughs) We were hosting you before we started. You were playing uh, Mario party. Uh, a pirated copy, I assume. Uh, we got salt upon wounds with a hundred bits. Thank you. Uh, Snake the Slayer with seven months. I was freaking out when I saw the post IGN made on use and started freaking out. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Snake the Slayer. We will t- we will we'll talk about that. Oh, oh yes, we will. Chris BX, thanks for 32 months. Uh, Brooks, thanks for the 38 months. Jesus Christ. Noted YouTuber. <laughs> In quotes. Razzle Jazzle, thanks for the six months. Between the GBA video and the SNP Pro 2 going up for pre-order, it's going to be a big week for Bob. Yes, keep your expectations at a minimum. But thank you. Um... So yeah, our first story is a crazy thing. This crazy thing. Um, let's see. This is according to Nintendo Life. Uh, random thought tenant was hard to follow. Try watching it on a Game Boy Advance. I picked Nintendo Life because we always we always pick Nintendo yeah. Life articles. I don't think I knew. Nin- I had a list of like all the articles I wrote about you. Nintendo Life was not in my list. How dare you? I mean, Aren't I got you trying to keep up first- with it. Will I'm trying. Damn it. <laughs> 
Christopher Nolan's movies have a reputation for being somewhat obtuse at times, and ha- his lar- latest magnum opus, Tenet, is no exception. I don't think I actually read this one. A time-bending yes. epic that befuddled and delighted audiences in almost equal measure last year, Tenet is available on streaming services and physical media, and now it's even on the Game Boy Advance. YouTuber Bob Wolf is the man we have to thank for this pro praiseworthy endeavor (laughs) he thought it would be amusing to port the file to a system that made it almost unwatchable a reaction to nolan's insistence that people watch tenant in cinema during you know a global pandemic which i think is word for word what i said it wasn't the easiest process after all the game boy advance is getting on a bit is getting on a bit these days that's that's british slang and was it really built with nolan's grand cinematic vision in mind and the end result is perhaps not what the a- auteur would approve of for starters wolf has had to carve up the two hour and 30 minute movie into five chunks each contained on a Game Boy advanced cart and its own custom stickers uh and the 4K resolution dropped down to 192 by 128, which I don't think I even say in the video. But they no, all just uh, the, the file I sent you was 1080p. Oh yeah, and then I took that and I I had to export it at as a as a 480p uh, widescreen Vimeo file. So it's an SD wide video. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, which still looks muddy even on Game Boy Advance's modest 240 by 6, a 160 display. Oh, and to cap it off, it runs at 6 frames a second. Eek. Still, it's fun for a laugh, and you can even download the movie, not true, and check it out on GBA emulator if you fancy making an already incomprehensible movie even harder to watch. If you're, I click on this. It sends to the to the video file of your video. Yeah, I was really, a, I tried really hard to word it so that people didn't get the idea that I was giving them the movie. Yeah. But that apparently I didn't, that didn't come across right. Um, I only got one comment that was like, um, isn't this piracy? <laughs> um, but yeah, I didn't. I really didn't want people to download that, thinking that they're gonna get the whole freaking movie on one ROM, and then they see my yeah. dumb face, and it's just the YouTube video. I didn't know how how best to uh, to say like, hey, watch my video on a Game Boy Advance emulator. Don't forget that you can yeah. watch it on a Game Boy Advance emulator. That is that I should have I should have worded that differently. Linking it here because YouTube probably wouldn't like the automatic. Yeah, I should have said, don't forget you can watch my video on a Game Boy Advance simulator. But anyway, so here's what happened, everybody. Um, I put up that video last week on the tenant on the Game Boy Advance, and I thought, you know, it was a stupid idea. It took forever to do, though. Um, and when I first put it out, it was doing really bad, like very, very bad. <laughs> it was, It was... YouTube immediately tells you how well a video is doing. And yeah. it was 10 out of 10. 10 it was ra- ranked 10 out of the last 10 videos. So it was doing very bad. Um, after the first hour, I changed the title. I forgot what the original title was. Um, something like Tenet. Oh, Tenet, but on the Game Boy Advance. Um, then after an hour, I changed it to, I put Tenet on a Game Boy Advance video cartridge out of spite. Um, and then... After like three hours of it being up, Engadget wrote an article about it. And then from there, it friggin' snowballed and friggin' ran the gamut between all different, uh, you know, blog sites and whatever. Um, I have, it was on IGN, Engadget, The Verge, Kotaku, Screen Crush, and Crack.com. <laughs> Cracked just happened like, uh, like, like, yeah, Cracked ago, was think. like the most recent. Yeah um obviously this is very good for the video um when, when this first happened i was like eh, it's not really doing that much better you know what yeah media is a bunch of trash youtubers uh, <laughs> we, we we got the, all the audience we need we don't need that bullshit no we do it really helped a lot <laughs> yeah um so obviously it's it's a it's a good thing that that all of that happened um all of the articles have been very nice. I've, I've, uh, usually, Surprisingly, yeah. I never expected 
a, an article to be written about me in a positive way. Yeah. <laughs> However, they they, I mean, most almost most of them get everything right, and I'm I'm surprised by that. Uh, I think Engadget uh got some things wrong that are pretty easy to get wrong like uh people were giving them shit because uh they said that 30 minutes is the cap on a game boy advance cartridge which i said the way i worded it it kind of sounded like that's the case but um really it's just on my game boy advance cartridges these um these uh rewritable ones the cap is 30 minutes in order to have like an actual thing that you can watch but on an actual game boy advance video cartridge like shrek they have a whole movie shrek on one and right. it's because that uh, majesco has really good compression they were able to force it onto a game boy advance cartridge. well it's it's their technology so they you know theoretically should be able to you know do it properly whereas you were using third-party software put together by fans years later yeah i'm using some stuff that some guy made which isn't going to have that sort of compression so uh yeah that's why i was limited to 30 minutes per cartridge um so of course there's like little things like that that people are like yeah. picking apart also a lot of websites called me a modder <laughs> I, I, it's always interesting to see w how people refer to a YouTuber. Do they call it YouTuber? Do they call them an influencer? Do they do they yeah. say Wolf Den? Do they say Bob Wolf from the Wolf Den or of the Wolf Den? <laughs> YouTuber known as Wolf Den. A lot of people said modder Wolf Den, which is not true. I am not, I am not yeah. a modder. <laughs> but I understand where they would get that. Because, like, if you look at the channel, you see stuff like uh, me putting Android on the Switch. You see the stuff with all of the uh, uh, the macro controllers and stuff. It's like, I can see where they would say I'm a modder, but if I am a modder, then I am the laziest modder on the planet. Yeah. It, it, you're a modder in a sense that you look for hardware that does things beyond what, you know, the first party hardware does. <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah. not exactly yeah you know, modding or anything. No, I want to buy a thing that mods it for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, one article called me a programmer, and that no, that, I, yeah. I, absolutely <laughs> not. I am not a programmer at all. One article called me a gra graphic designer, and that they a plus a plus for them. I also uh, saw AV Club on, calls you called you a spiteful genius. Well, that is also wrong. <laughs> I'm shocked that the spiteful ang that they all ran with the spiteful angle. You know what it is? I really didn't think that was gonna. That's fly. like that's the attention grabber. You know, doing it yeah. out of spite. You know, you're a scrappy little YouTuber sticking it to to the man. You know, you're sticking it to the guy who made the best Batman movie in the last 25 years or whatever. See, see, see I'm I I like to, I like to be modest, but if there's one thing that I'm really fucking good at. It's doing shit out of spite. <laughs> spite is a great motivator. I've it is. done many things towards my friends out of spite. Yes, I will spend forever doing something just <laughs> just for spite. Yeah. Now I got to run with that angle. Um, what else did people get wrong about me? <laughs> uh modest modder get out of here no we're not doing that uh oh i got a I, I i saw creative blog or creative block with a q it's a mm -hmm. twitter account that i follow and i saw it come up on my feed it's a it's a graphic design account and they put an article about it oh nice my favorite when it first came out was the verge and uh that was the the first day that it came out the, yeah. the verge had a had a good article uh the one quote that I really liked was in the second paragraph right here. <laughs> I want to put this on the fridge. It says, now, before you ask aloud why, just say, thank you, Bob Wolf, instead. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to, I want that published on my fucking tombstone. 
Anyway, we had capitalize on this. Uh, yeah. You know, we always read stories on here from all these different news sites. And we, we, if 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 we didn't do this, we would have read about it on on this this show. Yeah. To be honest, I didn't know if we were gonna talk about it. So my plan was to sneak it into the keep during the show uh. while you were noticing, <laughs> so that you accidentally read it and just keep doing it because I had all the articles. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been good yeah so i mean i knew that this the, the only way this video would have done good if some is if something like this happened but i thought it would have just been put on reddit or something yeah and it, of course there's no like like with youtube you can kind of like game it a little bit like i know if i put nintendo switch in the title it's gonna get like a certain amount of views you know but with mm -hmm. uh with something like this you're relying on the chance factor that someone outside of it will will like grab it and be like hey you guys should see this uh and i've done videos where i'm like this one's gonna go on reddit and everybody's gonna love it and then it doesn't and then it bombs hard <laughs> yeah <laughs> so um i'm glad that i'm very happy with how this did now my next video you would think that I would capitalize on this and make a similar video for the next one because all these new subscribers, they're going to want to see something very similar to this one. No, I'm doing a collaboration with Wood where we bought each other's stuff and we're going to open them. <laughs> so, Which should be fun. If you subscribed for more spiteful genius, then uh, <laughs> you're in the wrong place. Or if you, if you subscribed for some modding, go to, go to Retro Future or something. Yeah. Um Anyway. Oh yeah, anyway, uh after like a day, uh that video went from 10 out of 10 and straight up to 1 out of 10. So yeah. it is doing very good. Um anyway, Kate next for the 100 bits. Hey, it's the Tenant Game Boy Advance guy. Also hi Will. Hey. Hey, he was in the video the man, too. The man supplied who supplied the digital file of Tenet. Can you for Pop to use? So I was I made an error in the video. I said you used handbrake. It, it's it's a modest error. I just wanted to clarify. So I I have a Blu-ray drive for my MacBook. Um and so what I did was I bought a Blu-ray of Tenet uh with the company card, so it is a company expense. Um I ripped it to my Mac using a program called Make MKV. Oh, um, I have that. Yeah. Uh, you rip it to that, but it makes it a big MKV file. So I did use Handbrake to compress it down to an MP4, which is a reasonable uh, video file. It's what I used right. to do for all my other videos. If I had a Blu-ray, I would rip the file from there to get the footage. I learned that from Patrick H. Willems, and it's the probably the best tip i've ever gotten from a youtube video so have you seen tenet yet uh no <laughs> <laughs> I, neither I bought, have I. I i bought the movie i ripped the file for you i redeemed the itunes code for it <laughs> oh all right but i still haven't seen it you could have just ripped that you could have just ripped the itunes version no because the itunes version is like heavily drm'd okay and it, it, it honestly was just much easier to rip the Blu-ray and, and do it that way. Mm -hmm. So, Yeah, luckily, uh, <laughs> compression was not an issue for us. You could have yeah. ripped it at... You could have ripped it at... Uh, what's the lowest you can do? 240? I think so. Well, I wasn't sure what you needed, so I just did you know the standard I mean, 1080p. It, it's better to be excessive. Yeah. Um. Anyway, we got more stuff. We got Lex plays with 15 bits. Uh, kappa, 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 kappa. Uh, we got Fuddud gifting a sub to Lone Wolf 364. Thank you very much. Uh, and I believe that's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my Streamlabs is not working again. <laughs> we gotta, we gotta figure out a better solution for that. Yeah. Anyway, uh, oh, I could just give you the 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 two factor. You can do that. Yeah, you just need one of those two factor apps. Oh right, yeah, all right. Just, that's oh. a 
make a, a make a note at, after the show. After we'll, show problem, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Metascension says infinitely familiar with make MKV from building my Plex server. I tried Plex one time, and I was like, no, thank you. Yeah, I used to use uh, XBMC, and then I forgot what they changed it to, and I hated it. <laughs> A lot of these things that change the UI and make it really like nice and like user friendly yeah. are really not user friendly to set up. Yeah. So like eventually it'll be worth it, but I don't have the patience to get there. I I've come to the realization that because I know a lot of people who like love their Plex server and whatnot and have Plex set up and all that, but I've come to the realization that people like that are the same type of people who would you know look at the nes classic and go why don't you just get a raspberry pi yeah. and load it up with all these programs and all these emulators or somebody who will look at a playstation 5 and go well you know for about half the price you can make a pc that's you know four times as powerful all you need is a atx your mother and you're set so so part of it is that they think it's better that you can do all these things to it. They want to do all these yeah, things to right. it. So they so they think that's better and they think everybody wants to do all these things to it. Another thing is when people buy something, they want everybody to buy it. They, they buy it yeah. and then they're like, this is the best thing ever. Everybody should have one of these things. It's great. For example, my roommate was, he's just, he found a Brita filter. They make a Brita filter like thermos. It's like right. 17 bucks. And I'm like, that's mm -hmm. awesome. But yeah, that's that's sick. You should get that. And you can bring it to work and whatever. He's like, dude, buy it right now. I was like, why would I buy it? He's like, you should have it. It's great. It's cheap. You should get it. I was like, I have a thermos. Yeah. He's like, yeah, but this is a Brita filter. I was like, we have a Brita filter. He's like, yeah, but then when you're out, I was like, when I'm out, where, where do, where do go? I go? I don't go. I don't go anywhere. <laughs> and when I go somewhere, there'll be a water bottle. Yeah, I'm not like going to the woods where I'm not going to yeah. have water. Not everybody needs everything that you have, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. I will say, though, ever since my in-laws got me an air fryer for Christmas, <laughs> I've become an air fryer That's guy. what I'm talking about. And that shit. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you, though. <laughs> like, do you have it? Do you, no, question, I got do you, you in one fryer? ear, this air fryer <laughs> bullshit. I got Ian in the other ear telling me uh, every time he does something in his freaking crock pot, He's he's taking a picture of it and be like, yo, you gotta get a freaking pressure cooker. You gotta get a giant bomb that'll go off at any minute in your freaking kitchen. I will say, like, I I've cooked a, a lot of stuff in my air fryer, and a lot of it does come out better and faster than it does in a regular oven. Wow. So I I swear by it. I have the version I have, you can set it on your phone. You can even tell your <laughs> why, uh, why would I ever assistant why would I up. ever do that? <laughs> Because you can. Let me put some nugs in the air fryer. I might want some nugs <laughs> in like three hours and then I'll turn it on from my phone. Yeah. You ever, you ever go to you ever go to Starbucks and just get, get a latte, you know? You ever do yeah. that? No, you should get an espresso machine. It's much <laughs> easier. It's much better to just get an espresso machine and then get all the beans and everything. You make your own beans and it's better it's a better latte, it's yeah. better for you. I mean, for the most part, I am with you on that because I, I don't, you know, when people say, oh, just make your own ground beef. No, I'm not fucking doing that. <laughs> I'll, I'll buy pre-made ground beef and taste the same. Not everybody. Uh, everybody's got their own priorities. Not everybody yeah. needs to, you know, have all of these things. But that said, everybody in the chat, go buy an air fryer. <laughs> Uh, make your own beans. <laughs> Edible <laughs> chip sock just quoted me saying, make your own beans. Yeah, everybody get a coffee roaster. I had a friend who bought a roast, a coffee roaster. Really? He had it in his kitchen. That lasted all of like a month. <laughs> um. Anyway, Kate, thanks for the 100 bits. Oh, you, uh, I read that already. Uh, next news. All right, real Wolf Den news. Uh, 8 bit Do reveals its new Pro 2 Bluetooth controller compatible with Switch. What is this ad? <laughs> uh, Adelier Adel 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 Ryza 2. Oh, the sequel to Adelier Ryza. You know that game. Yeah, of course. Yeah. All right. 
Anyway. Weep shit. All right. <laughs> if you're still on the hunt for the right controller to play games with your Nintendo Switch, you might be interested to hear 8-Bit2 has just announced the new Pro 2 con- Bluetooth controller. Uh, it works with a range of mobile devices, Steam, Windows, and, of course, Nintendo's hybrid device. Uh, it's described as an evolution of the Pro Plus in every way and is only a fraction of the price of competitive Pro controllers coming in at $49.99 US dollars. Some of the standout features include pro-level paddle buttons, three custom profile switch buttons, a mode, bu- a mode switch button uh, to switch between Switch, Android, uh, D input, and X input, um, allowing for players to easily pair the controller to a device and enhance grip. It also includes ultimate software to help you adjust settings and, ca- and a carry case, which is sold separately. And yeah, there it is. Obviously, I have a lot to say about this. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, oh, they don't do they link to 8 Do's website? Is it even on 8 Do's website? It should be. Um, anyway, uh, the original SN30 Pro Plus came out almost two years ago. Yes. Um, my video is from August 2019. This, it is on 8 Do's website. Okay. This is uh, about a few. This is like a couple months too late because I I broke my last SN30 Pro Plus. I don't know what happened. The buttons just started to get like bad. Like the D-pad just started to like fall mm-hmm. apart basically. Um, and then I got a new one and I was like, oh, this is like a million times better. Um, so I wore the shit out of my SN30 Pro Plus. Um. There are... Do you have a link to it on their website? Uh, Yeah, I'll put it in the keep. Yeah, let me see that. Uh, there, There's it's a there. lot of great improvements. Right off the bat, significantly uglier, I have to say. <laughs> I'm not a fan of it, the design. Is it? Oh, God. Yes. Like, how different is it from the original? I think it's a darker gray, which is fine mm-hmm. on its own, but the 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 buttons are gross i don't like that that looks cheap it looks like the buttons from the the xbox controller they made yeah yeah you're right but it has the the like uh font of a of a of an snes but the colors of a of a friggin of of a playstation so it's like it's it's, yeah it's it's all it's all messed up i don't like it well um not to spoil anything but they it comes in three colors there's that one there's the the Game Boy model where it looks like it's white with the red buttons. And then there's the all black version. Right. So uh, I also don't like the all black version. I mean, no, no I, like- I take it back. All black is cool. I just like the Game Boy one significantly more than all yeah. the other ones. That one is sick. I want that one in my face right now. Black is cool, too. That gray one, yeah. I'm not. I'm not having it. I don't like it that much. But I guess that no, that is why it's darker gray because uh, it matches a PlayStation. Yeah, that's the PlayStation style. Um, yeah, I still I still want the Game Boy looking one, the G style they call it, I think. Uh, but that's not that that's they they did a lot of things to it. Um, I'm hoping they did some minor things like you know. People complain about the D-pad, how it like, I don't want to call it drift because it's not drift, but like, <laughs> yeah, they said like the diagonals are weird. Um, maybe yeah. hopefully they fix something like that. I- I've heard like their Genesis controller like fixed the issue, and that was a more recent one. So hopefully they implement that in here. Personally, my controller just got shitty. Like, I, I- it's hard to describe. Yeah. It just the buttons got weird. Um, and hopefully it's more durable and it'll last a little longer but two years and i played i used the hell out of it so i think i got yeah. a lot of use out of it um uh, but the big updates here are uh you got uh uh the mode switch on the back so well you got you, you also have the paddles the paddles is probably the biggest right. change um yeah. So you got two extra buttons which is really good because it's great having extra buttons on the back uh i like that for things like call of duty even though i'm not going to be using this for call of duty yeah it's nice to have uh buttons on the back for things like the stick clicks 
I would love to be able to disable yeah. my right stick click and just move it to the back. I um, have the uh, the back attachment for the DualShock Four, and I used it like a lot when I was playing PlayStation. It actually like is really helpful for a lot of games. Yeah. So I think that it should be stock on on some OEM controllers. I'm surprised it's not, but I know. Uh, I, I think part of the problem is it makes gripping it weird, but if you put it in a good spot, it shouldn't yeah. matter. Well, as far as the um, the pro con- the Xbox Pro controller, like has the, it in good the spots Elite controller, the Elite, yeah, yeah. Some people don't like the so that has four paddles. Yeah. Some people don't like the the extra the the third and fourth ones because it makes it hard to hold the controller. Right. Um, and I, some of the controllers I've used that have these buttons do it is hard to hold the controller but this looks like it's out of the way this looks like it's in a good spot yeah um you know what i kind of like i have this uh this scuff controller uh for the playstation that has buttons on the right and left of the bumpers so that's kind of cool it's got extra buttons there you can use it you can use like the fat of your fingers to press it um but anyway it's also got the mode switch on the back. Right now with an 8-bit do controller, if you want to switch from switch mode to uh, PC mode, you have to hold down start and X or start and Y, depending on which one you want. Yeah, That is confusing to remember. There's nothing yeah. on the device itself to tell you which one to do. And you don't know what mode it's in. You just kind of have to guess. Um, flipping a switch... That makes my life a lot easier. So uh, that makes a lot more sense instead of having to do like a macro to instead of having to program the thing. Um, so that's good. There's also a button on the front. Uh, this is for profiles. So uh, with the ultimate software, you can change button layouts. You can add macros and stuff, and uh, you can save. It looks like three different profiles. Uh, which is good. Yeah, it actually says right here. Pro 2 gives you more ways to play. The custom profile switch button holds three custom profiles that can be switched on the fly. With an enhanced grip, Pro 2 allows you to hold the controller with even less effort. I don't. The grip looks exactly the same to me. <laughs> the new four-way mode switch button allows you to instantly switch between Switch Android D input and X input, so you can pair to any device as easily as possible. Um... So yeah, uh, if, if you have custom profiles set, maybe you have uh, like dead zone set for the analog stick for certain games. Maybe you have, I, I know on my controller, I have almost no sensitivity on the triggers. I completely disable the sensitivity on the triggers because you don't need that for for uh, the Switch. Like almost no games use trigger sensitivity. Um, so I have that completely disabled. Um, or I have the sensitivity all the way up, I guess, so that if I tap it, it goes off. Um, yeah. So maybe I want to turn that off. If I want to play Smash Brothers or like I think Trials HD uses uh, trigger sensitivity. Um, that That's a good use of the mode switch. I think the best use of the mode switch might be macros. If you want to set different macros, maybe if you're playing Animal Crossing, you have macros set for like taking out a tree or or, or, or farming a rock or something. You can cycle through the macros depending on what you want to do. Uh, so you can have, you can hold. If you got two buttons on the back, each one has a macro. You can hold six macros on this thing. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, so they also updated the ultimate software to work on the phone, which is great. I wonder how it's going to work though. Right now. Uh, the ultimate software, I have to plug my controller into my computer yeah. and you have to, so like if I'm in the middle of a game and I want to change something on my controller, I have to disconnect it from my switch, plug it into my computer, do the thing. It farts the firmware over to my controller and I got to unplug it and reconnect it to my switch. And it's kind of annoying if the phone will stay connected while I'm playing the game and I don't have to reconnect it to the switch that'd be really cool I don't know if they'd be able to do that because it's a bluetooth connection on both so 
Unless there's also too, it says that the, the ultimate software is going to be available for PC, Android, and iOS, mm-hmm. but the controller is not compatible with iOS. Yes, it's only compatible with Mac. So if if you can't connect the controller to the phone to an iOS phone normally, how is that going to work with the software? So I there's a lot of weird regulations with Apple. I think yeah. that it'll it'll connect. You just can't play any games with it. Okay. There's also a weird thing with D input and X input. I think X yeah, input I try, is the one. I tried looking that up just now, and I don't really know the difference. I know X input is Windows. Yeah, but I'm I, still trying to figure out what D input is. I think, I think that's also Windows. I think that's old Android and old Windows. But there's an A for Android. Uh yes. Android there's a new Android that everybody mm-hmm. uses. Uh I so uh, this is for everybody else. I changed the setting in OBS to uh hopefully make it so the stream doesn't crash every friggin' half an hour or so. Now the bitrate's doing a weird thing, but I think it's fighting off a crash. <laughs> uh so I think I think we're doing something. Something's happening. Anyway, um, I, yeah, I don't know the difference between D input and X input. Uh, oh, Meta Sanji says D input is Android slash old Windows before Microsoft made X input for Xbox controllers the standard. Uh, okay. And so, Louis Bick says the SN30 Pro Plus is compatible with iOS. Use mine to play COD Mobile on iPhone. It registers the Bluetooth device as a DualShock 4. Okay. So here's what I think it is I think that uh, it's not officially working with with ios but it does work i think that's what because well, the, all yeah, of they, all he of, says it recognizes it as a dualshock 4 and i know a lot right. of computers will default to dualshock 4 if they sense bluetooth all of apadu's old controllers before the sn30 pro plus said that they worked on ios and in the manual it said ios but for whatever reason they took ios off of it um yeah. Which is why for that for the fight pad I tried that on on uh yeah that so the fight pad says it works on Switch and PC and that's it but it also works on Mac they just don't say it works on Mac um because I guess it registers as something else on the on the Mac um, yeah or did I use it as an Xbox controller no maybe well no because then I tried it on my Xbox and it didn't work I don't know. Uh, so it might work on more things is what I'm trying to say. It might work on more things than what they say. It just might be a little finicky on those things. Official compatibility is switch windows, Mac OS, Android, steam, uh, and raspberry Pi. Uh, so you can, so here's what you can do with the ultimate software. It looks like you could do exactly the same stuff as you could with the old ultimate software. You got button Mm -hmm. mapping. You can remap all of the buttons, which is great. We love to see it. Uh, you can change the 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 stick uh, dead zones, or the sen- they say sensitivity, um, which is also great. Uh, triggers you can adjust the ranges of your triggers to act faster, which is what I did, uh, because the switch, the Joy Cons, and the Pro Controller don't have any pressure sensitivity, so most games don't use pressure sensitivity. Mm-hmm. Um, vibration modify the vibration intensity for a better comfort during gameplay so basically you're either turning that shit off or you're leaving it on um and then macros i wish the macros were different you have to program the macros each button at a time in in the ultimate software and then save it onto the controller um which is good and people like that that's good for like fighting games and stuff um it's not good for long sequences. I would rather be able to just record what I'm doing on the controller. It'd be a lot easier if there was just a record button and mm-hmm. I can record the input on the fly. Uh, I really hope they add something like that to the ultimate software. That would make the ultimate software way more worth it, in my opinion. Uh, as of right now, the macros aren't that great because of that reason. Um, but... It's great that we have uh, paddles on the back because that means we can 
mess around with uh, macros some more. Um, also, before I had macros assigned to like the share button. So it's good that we have more buttons because we could add macros to stuff. Yeah. Why have they been shilling for this controller for 15 minutes? I don't know if you know where you are right now. <laughs> You must be new here. This is a uh, we we talk about news and technology and stuff, and this yeah. is a new thing. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're is... not we're not just about putting movies onto <laughs> weird things. This was maybe my come back. Maybe come back next week if you want to see us put uh, End Game on a on a refrigerator. This was my favorite controller for the Switch because of where the D-pad is. And like, look. If you already have an 8-bit do SM30 Pro Plus and like you recently got it, there's almost no reason to upgrade, I don't think. Yeah. Unless you really need those back buttons. Um but if you don't have one and you've been wanting to go when when this comes out, this will be your chance. Yeah. Another great thing that nobody really uh or I forget to mention about the this controller. Um the battery. It comes with a rechargeable battery, but you can take the rechargeable battery pack yes. out and just put double a's in if you want yes and i wish this was standard on the xbox controller mm -hmm. like you can't you can get a rechargeable battery pack but you have to get that separately i wish it just came with the rechargeable battery pack but let you use double a's like in a pinch because that's the the ideal solution they make so much money on those uh play and charge kits i know like you know, when I worked at GameStop with the Xbox 360 days, there were just people were just going through those left and right. Yeah, I mean uh, the 360 ones were garbage, but the one yeah. on Xbox One that I have actually is pretty good. Yeah, even the the knockoffs I got off Amazon work really well. Yeah, I use this uh, this little charge stand. It's great. Yeah. Um. So anyway, that's the Pro Two. The SN, yes. Actually, they're just calling it the 8 Do Pro 2. It looks like they're mm -hmm. dropping the SN30. So it used to be called the SN30 because it was Super Nintendo 30. I don't know. Um, and Because it used to look exactly like a Super Nintendo controller. And yeah. they started to like get away from that and make their own design. Uh, which I which I completely understand. Yeah. Um, it comes out in April. Yeah. So, uh, my, my wife's birthday. <laughs> oh. That is the 12th? Yes. So now you know what to get her. Did she, yeah, does she want one of these? Yeah. No. I pre-ordered one, but I'm also getting a review one. So I don't know whatever nice. comes first. Um, they also announced a, a case for it. The case is specifically for the SM30 Pro 2, but it says it's also compatible with the Switch Pro controller, a PS5, PS4, and Xbox One controller. Oh, um, I didn't even see that. That? That is currently a not available on Amazon, but the page is up. That is really freaking cool. Yeah. This looks exactly like the Elite controller case. Yeah. Or the Gully Kit controller case that I have. Yeah. Um and they have this clip too. I this clip is great. I have the I have it for uh an Xbox controller. And they're like eight bit their sn30 for xbox they make a they make a clip like this yeah. uh and it works great it holds the switch or a it doesn't hold the switch no it holds a phone i don't think it holds a switch yeah. no that wouldn't hold a switch it works really good for uh uh for the xbox when you're playing uh remote play yeah i don't know how well it's gonna do for uh I mean, I don't think this thing's going to be able to work on remote play. Uh, but that'd be cool. Yeah, why don't they get this to work for Xbox? Like, would it be that hard? I don't, that's I, that's what I never understood. Like, that Xbox controller that they made, the, the Game Pass controller, mm -hmm. is just for Game Pass. It's not... You can't use it on a, on a regular Xbox. Oh, yeah. That's weird. Um, also, this will probably work on a PlayStation 3. <laughs> yeah. Just got to throw that out there. Yeah. So anyway, look out for it in April. I'm sure I will have a video on it. Uh, 
obviously I'm excited about this, but I mean, you know, yeah, it's got a lot of nice, neat little features and little upgrades, but it's not going to don't run out and just don't throw your eight, your SM30 pro plus out the window just yet. Yeah. Um, it's not an ad alone. See you fucking idiot. <laughs> I would say it's an ad if it's an ad. Um, Next news. Well, actually, no. Lexto Lexicon, thank you for the two months. And Marvid, thank you for the three months. SNES colors or Game Boy aesthetic? Uh, Game Boy. They they don't have an SNES version for this. Yeah. I mean, I guess technically... Well, no, because then they would have just made the colors purple. Yeah. The buttons. I liked that more than whatever they did here with the yeah. with the like PlayStation style one. Yeah. I would have rather been uh, Super Nintendo. I do think that all black controller is very sexy though. Yeah, the all black is good. I, I yeah, I just yeah. I would rather have the Game Boy one. Yeah. Bob, can I have your 8 bit do arcade stick? No, I have uh, work to do with it still. <laughs> uh I got so there's a guy on Etsy that makes mm. just the D-pad. I mean, not the D-pad, the WASD, the keyboard keys thing. Yeah. It's a disc. You literally just pop it into the 8 do thing, and it just works. Ah. Interesting. So um, I got I got to do that. Nice. You don't pop it. You got to connect four wires, but it's still, it's, yeah, you literally is... drop it in. It's it's really yeah. not a big deal. Because that thing, it's like an arcade stick, and you know how that has, you know, it yeah, literally it's just got... plugs in. Yeah. Anyway, speaking of arcades, yeah, we're getting a new Ninja Turtles game. This came out of nowhere. Yeah, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge is a retro brawler coming to PC and consoles. A new, a brand new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game is on the way called TMNT Shredder's Revenge. It is inspired by the beloved 1991 arcade game Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Turtles in Time. Much like that game, Shredder's Revenge is a side-scrolling beat-em-up, and it's being developed by Tribute Games and published by .emu. Uh, it is set to release on both consoles and PC, although there is no word on exactly which consoles it will be available on. Taking a retro pixel art direction, Shredder's Revenge preserves the Teenage Mutant's original 87 design and presents classic villains like Krang and Shredder, the game takes place in locations familiar to the TMNT universe from the streets of New York City to Dimension X. A Steam page is now live, although there is no price listed. Just as you'd expect, Shredder's Revenge supports a four-player co-op multiplayer as you square up against Shredder and the Foot Clan. Each turtle has their own moves and skills, and you'll be able to utilize combos as you deal with your foes. There's also a mention of vehicles and a story mode. Publisher and developer.emu's past titles include Streets of Rage 4 and Wonder Boy The Dragon's Trap. Tribute Games made the retro-inspired games Panzer Paladin, Flint Hook, and Mercy Kings. A few current members of the studio were also on the 2007 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game for Game Boy Advance. Previous TMNT games made for consoles were released in 2016 and titled TMNT Mutants in Manhattan, Developer Platinum Games and publisher Activision made Mutants in Manhattan, a game that also struck tr that also struck stuck true to the TMNT's beat 'em up roots. Considering Shredder's Revenge is made by an entirely different team, Mutants in Manhattan shouldn't be indicative of anything for this new TMNT game. We'll have to stay tuned for when Shredder's Revenge is released. Date unknown currently to see what it's about. I did not know Platinum Games made those Ninja Turtles games. Yeah, it wasn't good platinum. So <laughs> this was a weird this was a weird time. That was a weird time in Platinum's uh you know life cycle where they had partnered with Activision for three licensed games Legend of Korra, Transformers Devastation, and uh, Mutants in Manhattan. Legend of Korra is hot garbage. Okay. Transformers Devastation was actually pretty good. Um uh, and then Mutants in Manhattan was like somewhere in between the two. Was Legend not, of Korra the game, game that I brought home from GameStop because there was the easy uh, rare achievement? No, that was close. That's av that was an Avatar: The Last Airbender game. Mm -hmm. Same universe, but uh, different different game. 
Yeah, it took like four point. seconds to get like the what's it called? The major yeah. achievement, whatever it's called. Uh, it's not, not a platinum, platinum achievement, but it is a platinum. Yeah, uh, the the thousand gamer score or whatever. Yeah. Um. Anyway, uh, dot emu. Uh, is it like that? That implies that they did emulator stuff. <laughs> That's why I'm I'm looking at their uh, wiki right now. I don't think so. I mean, because they they made Streets of Rage four and Wonder Boy. Those weren't those were brand new games. Those weren't emulated games. One of the first games they worked on was Street Fighter two Champion Edition, but it was in two thousand nine. So what did they port it? I I don't know. <laughs> There's like a thousand versions of Street Fighter two. Were they a port house? Maybe. Maybe it might have started off. Yeah. With that. Yeah. No, I think they started out porting stuff. Yeah. That's probably where they get where they got their name from. Nikki Boom was a port, it looks like. Isn't dot .emu a calculator for phones? I, I don't freaking know. <laughs> uh, I can't tell if Bob likes it or not based on the expression on his face. No, I like it a lot. I think this looks freaking awesome. The, the, yeah, the, this, so the song, I'm not going to play it because of DMCA, but it's freaking cool. The song is by uh, Faith No More lead singer Mike yes. Patton. Yeah. Yes. Which is crazy. <laughs> Uh, also, uh, you could, I mean, the pixel art style looks, looks phenomenal. Yeah. Um, it looks great. You can see here, uh, they, they said that they all have different moves and they control differently and stuff. You could see yeah. for like a split second, they're running. It looks like, uh, Donatello is the slowest. Yeah. Which I think is great because he, uh, he's got the longest reach. So they got to yeah. nerf him somewhere. Michelangelo is hoofing it. <laughs> Yeah, he is the fastest, uh, and Leonardo and Raphael look like they're about the same. Yeah, Leonardo looks like he's like maybe a little faster. Yeah, but I'm still, I'm sure they all have like because yeah, Donatello would have the longest reach. Raphael probably has the shortest reach. Um, he's probably so they the have strongest like, though. Yeah, so they all have ways of balancing each other out, um, just like the old games did. Uh, what I like about it, it like isn't just that it's going back to like the classic retro style of the original arcade game turtles in time but it's injecting personality into it just by the way their their uh movement animation cycle is because in the old games they just they all basically move the same this one you know their idle animations all look different they all have like that distinct personality from the cartoon the the enemies all have unique animations to it it's adding a flair to it it's, rather than just being the original games all over again. It's kind of similar to what Dynamu did with Streets of Rage Four. So. It, it it looks like uh, something you would see in like a retro inspired indie game. Yes, like, like which is like, exactly. You, you don't need to put millions of dollars into a a new like uh like like into a into a revive of a big IP like this. You know, mm -hmm. J just making a small little indie inspired game is more than enough to appease fans like us yeah that's totally fine uh, yeah and i think the fact that you know the people that got for it because that emu like i said streets of rage 4 wonder boy dragon strap those are like great retro inspired games um especially streets of rage 4 which is a beat em up which is what tmnt is so they know what they're doing and tribute games not only did a bunch of members from that team work on the 2007 GBA TMNT game, which was very good, mm -hmm. um, but a lot of those same people also worked on Scott Pilgrim, oh. another retro-inspired excellent beat-em-up. So I have very high expectations for this based on the pedigree, but based on this pedigree, I don't think I have anything to worry about because they seem to know what they're doing. Eric says, when does it release? I don't know if it has a release date. It does not have a release date yet. We just know it's happening. Yes. And uh, the people want to know, Will, which Ninja Turtle are you? Probably Leonardo, because I'm not that exciting. <laughs> <laughs> What's this about the new cartoon where Raphael is the leader? I don't like that at all. So, okay, I haven't watched it, but apparently it's not bad. It's Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um... That's the one where they got really weird character designs, like Raphael's the size of a truck. Right. And they, they Leonardo's got like red scars on his eyes for some reason. 
Um, Casey Jones is a woman, uh, in case anybody gets upset by that. Um, John Cena was the bad guy, though. So that was fun. <laughs> yeah, I, never, I haven't watched it, but it, it just looks so weird and not the Ninja Turtles I'm used to. I only so see... I skip- I only see the uh, the animation, which like 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 yeah. I only see posts talking about how great the animation is, and it does look freaking awesome. Yeah. But yeah, I didn't I didn't because this is the cons like like you said, Raphael's the leader. Uh, I don't think Shredder's in it at all. It's, it's very different from Ninja Turtles you're used to, and the 2012 show which preceded it, the CGI one was fantastic, and they canceled it for Rise of the TMNT. Mm-hmm. And then that didn't last very long. So they basically canceled the good show for no reason. Um. So yeah, do we even know uh, consoles? No, it just says PC and consoles. I, I suspect that this will be on everything. Yeah. Uh, th- I, there's no reason not to put this game on everything. Yeah. All right. Next, next news rumor Nintendo of America might be shutting down its support forums. Official this announcement is, supposedly expected in the coming days. This was this news was on Friday, and then we haven't heard anything in the coming days, but the rumor still stands. Word on the street is that Nintendo of America is supposedly closing its official support forums after more than a decade. This information comes from Nintendo Everything via a post on the Nintendo subreddit. Users referred to as top members have allegedly been sent an email about the closure ahead of an apparent announcement in the coming days. After more than a decade of hosting a fun, safe community where passionate Nintendo fans and new players alike can support each other with answers to technical questions about Nintendo's products and services, we have decided to close the Nintendo support forums. Going forward, we will focus on the many other Nintendo support options that we have greatly expanded over the last decade. We have made the decision to close our customer support forums since there are many other ways to easily contact Nintendo. Any customers, any consumers who need support are encouraged to visit support.nintendo.com slash contact us to find the best contact option for their specific situation. Options include support by phone, chat, text, message, or by creating a help ticket. According to the same email, Nintendo will be offering these forum users a free download code, allowing them to select from a variety of its most popular first-party Nintendo titles. If we hear anything more official, we'll be sure to let you know. For now, there is no formal confirmation of the of the forum's closure. Have you ever made use of NOA support forums? Leave a comment down below. I never even knew that they had support forums. Me neither. I would imagine that would be something Nintendo would not want to have. Yeah. Because they're, they're, they're already like pretty much on top of their customer support. You know, yeah. if you got any problems, you could easily contact them. Uh, yeah. And they don't want people talking about all of the problems that, that they could possibly <laughs> have. And they don't want people to help each other out. They, they want to be the ones to help you out. Yeah. That seems like a weird thing for Nintendo to have. So it yeah. makes sense to shut it down. However, you, you, if you click on the little Reddit source, uh, yeah. the Reddit thread only has, it has three upvotes. It has one comment. And it just says nothing more sus than a deleted account. And the post yeah. isn't there anymore because the guy deleted his account. Well, all right. So I just did this. If you go to the Nintendo support form, they they say it's closing. Oh. Yeah. I probably should have done this earlier. So there's a link to it at the top. Yeah, go there. Closing Nintendo support forums March 23rd. We have made the decision to close our support forums since there are many other ways to easily contact Nintendo. Anyone who needs support are encouraged to go. To, and then it's basically the same thing as before. Why aren't they waiting until March 31st when Nintendo gets shot in the back of the head? I know, right? Uh, Very strange. What's suspicious to me in the the original Reddit, according to this article, where it says Nintendo will offer 
these forum uses a free download code. I'd imagine there are a lot of people on these forums. So you're going to give download codes to like well over 100 people? Download codes for what? Uh, According to this, a variety of first party games. Very strange. Yeah. I've never seen this before in my life. Me neither. Error number know it nine. Hello, I am trying to contact connect to realms and meet up in different servers with my Switch cross-platform friends, but Minecraft crashes and causes issues relating towards my Microsoft account. I've been trying to uh, trying to find ways to fix this. So why this is why I don't think Nintendo should have support forums. <laughs> this is a question for Microsoft support or Minecraft support. Well, I I think I get the idea it's, you know, if you have a Switch and you're having a problem with something regarding your Switch, this is a place to go where other people can hopefully, like, help you out. Not necessarily Nintendo, but someone who, like, knows the situation. It's kind of like, because Apple has the same thing. The mm-hmm. Apple support forms. Um, and not just... Do they? Because you know, whenever just I for... have a problem, I find it on Mac rumors. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know if they still have it, but I used to... You know, whenever I Google the problem, and it would take me to the the Apple support forums, and those were like fairly helpful because those aren't just for like the current stuff; those are also for like, you know, older systems and older computers and things like that. Uh, the most responses in the last few posts is on one called "Who else wants Mario RPG?" <laughs> oh, and they got an answer from a moderator. Oh, look at that. Hello and thank you for using Nintendo support forums. Although we love to give feedback for ideas of fans, these forums are primarily for working out technical issues with Nintendo systems and respective games through peer-to-peer support. Nintendo employees may provide answers from time to time, but well, and then I can't, I can't read the rest. Expand. Uh, but the overall goal is to encourage our community members to respond to each other's questions regarding technical support. That said, if you want to let us know about feedback or your comments, please feel free to comment on us directly and we'll be happy to pass your feedback along. I will go ahead and lock this thread. So fuck you, yeah. Lee's 51. You don't, Basically, yeah. You don't get to <laughs> criticize our Nintendo Switch Online games. You know what? Would you imagine if it was that guy's fault? This whole thing got shut down. (laughs) Yeah, they're like, you know what? We can't have people asking for for everybody. We can't have people asking for Mario RPG. Might as well shut the whole damn thing down. Uh. So I mean, yeah, I mean, like I, I get it and I don't get it. Like I get why something like this would exist because there should be a place where people talk to each other and figure out problems with each other, but. It's a weird thing for Nintendo to have. This seems like something that you would just find on like a Reddit thread or something. Like, yeah, because it's stuff like that. Because stuff like that happens. We clicked on two things, and both of them are shouldn't don't belong here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but the top post is uh, Nintendo 3DS fatal error, custom firmware question mark. I got this 3DS secondhand, so I was wondering if this error message 3DS would pro- produce or if it's had custom firmware put on. Oh. Mostly from modding and hacking websites. Oh, I could I could see this getting shut down in two seconds. <laughs> but like that, I mean, if the guy wants help on his hacked 3DS, it seems like yeah. there's a better place for that too. Check the Wii and Wii U tab. Oh, God. How far back does it go? Well, it's, I think, officially goes to the Wii uh, Wii U, but there's also a classic systems tab. Oh. It's a very, it's a very slow website. They, are, they already yeah. are not allocating uh, system resources. Yeah, it's having a hard time loading right now. Yeah. Uh, Wii and Wii Mini. 
controller not connected to dashboard. One just says Wii, and it has the most responses. <laughs> Emulating Mario Galaxy. Let's see. <laughs> oh, Let's boy. See this guy's say. I bought and own a legitimate copy of Mario Galaxy for the Wii, so should I technically be allowed to emulate the game? Question mark. Oh, and they got an official answer. Oh, boy. Thank you for using Nintendo support forums. As per our terms and conditions, we ask that you refrain from posting or discussing illegal activity, piracy, emulation, and the like on the support forums. I will be locking this thread accordingly. If you have any technical questions or issues, please feel free to make another post. Thank you. So far, the only answers we've gotten from Nintendo are, I'm locking this post. <laughs> I checked out Classic Systems. And there's one post that just says GoldenEye. Did you and make that? No, I did not write that. <laughs> I think every 35-year-old kid here, <laughs> every 35-year-old kid here who owns a Switch wants to play GoldenEye for the Nintendo 64. If, if not, you're probably a communist. <laughs> Nintendo needs to remaster it, but not do what it did with the wii version keep it original with everything just upgrade the graphics and dialogue more scenes from the movie i guess especially with from K jensen who the hell's that that's uh xenia basically i'm just saying bring back golden eye please hello and thank you for using the <laughs> support forums Although we love to hear feedback and ideas from fans, these forms are primarily for working out technical issues. A copy and paste of what you heard from the guy who wanted Mario RPG. Yeah. So basically, this is shutting down because people aren't using the forms properly. Right. Okay? So now nobody can use the forms. So this, this post that just says we. Uh, I have a black Wii model, blah, blah, blah. The serial number is removed. <laughs> I have gray Aokin AV cable cord ending with the white. Okay. I have a console, blah, blah, blah. My TV is Samsung model, and then the serial number. Why is this guy doing this? I just purchased the RCA to HDMI converter, composite HDMI. Okay. It looks like he copied and pasted that from Amazon. Here is the link, and then it's an Amazon link. I connected the yellow with yellow, red. Okay. I could not hear the sound from the Wii, but I could not. I could, I could hear the sound from the Wii, but I could not see the picture. No signal. I attempted this. Okay, so he has a cheap... Wait, is this the same converter that we used? No. We had this issue once with a cheap... With that white HDMI yeah. converter. It, yeah. It, it'll... It's a... It's a... It's a... Refresh rate issue. Yeah. It, the the refresh rate is like perfectly out of sync so you can't see what's happening but you can hear it yeah um so it's just a, it's just a refresh rate issue you got to get a better uh uh upscaler uh anyway hello thank you for using this as one apologies for the delayed reply if you have not already resolved the issue we would be glad to see what further assistance we might be able to provide you well i have have you already reached out to us pre if while I know you have already reacted to this previously, to see what course of action we might be able to recommend you, please reach out to support agent with this link. So, so the only person to use this correctly uh, was asked to reach out using a general support link. I found one that's um, says I'm curious if Nintendo has an official policy on printing box art. I just clicked on I have that. A number, <laughs> I have a number of Game Boy, GBA, etc. games with no cases and want to convert empty DS cases to and print the box art out. Uh, is it allowed by Nintendo or is there a copyright in place saying I can't print the box art out and to use on my own cases? Nintendo responded. Uh, using box art for the purposes of which you mentioned would not violate any copyright laws at this time. Nintendo system and game manuals are available for download through our official website as well, so I don't believe you would run into any issues for the box art. If you have any other questions related to our policies, feel free to contact us at this link. And it's a link to official support. But that's interesting. I did not know Nintendo offered manuals and box art through their official website. That is... Yeah, that's weird. Oh, yeah. Oh, 
Wait, feel free. No, well, so where's the where is that website? I don't know because I'm on their official website now and I'm looking. Like if I go to the the thing on top is Bowser's Fury, and I don't see where like it says download tra download box art or manual or nothing. Nintendo box art download. Nope. Nope. No, that'll probably just take you to Yeah, wherever you get whatever third party website has. So I don't want to say this, Bob, but I think Nintendo NOA mod <laughs> Tevin is a liar. <laughs> Doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. Yeah. Uh weird. So this is the only one so far that had a legitimate response. Yeah. But it's not a good response. Yeah. I mean, also, I mean, it's great that they're finally like, this does not violate our copyright. You're free to do yeah. whatever you want. But where the hell are the downloads? Is is it yeah. is it support for each individual game, maybe? I don't know. Like if you look up the game specifically? They gotta have a library of manuals. Because like who has a manual for friggin'? Well, I know I know that at least on the NES and SNES Classic, Whoop. they have QR codes. Sorry, I did the intro by accident. <laughs> they have QR codes for all the manuals in the NES and SNES Classic. If you scan them, they'll take you to a website with the, the manuals on it. So the manuals exist somewhere. Very interesting. Um... I would love to know where. If somebody wants to leave a yeah. comment where they are officially from Nintendo, that would be nice. Find me a find me a Wii Sports Resort manual. Uh, I see you got the Mario mug, Bob. Yes, this is the. Uh, I got this from the Nintendo store a while ago. Uh, what was I there to get? I think the Game and Watch. Maybe. No. No, did Maybe. you get something recently? I did, but I got this before that. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's the Mario 35th anniversary mug. It is huge. I mean, I, I'm a, I, I'm already, I got a big head. So, what could I compare it to? Um, here's the SN30 Pro Plus. <laughs> that is a that, big mug. Doesn't look that big compared to that. Uh, here you go. Here's a Game Boy Advance SP. Oh, uh, people are Eric Henley put in the comments uh, a manual downloads official Nintendo ma manual downloads and Kami Thom put the Wii Sports official box art. Kami Thom, you must not want uh, GoldenEye to come out on the Switch. <laughs> wow, this is it. This is freaking Wii Sports Resort. He did exactly yeah. he, he, he succeeded. Oh, look at this. It has a watermark on it on every page Does has a it? watermark. Ah. Uh, that's so annoying. What is it? Uh Triton, that one guy posted it, the manual for new Super Mario Brothers on DS. That doesn't have a watermark. Weird. On every page. Weird. Yeah. Alright, so the page is. It's right here. I'm not reading out that whole yeah. thing. Downloadable manuals applies to the Switch family, Switch, Switch Lite, 3DS, XL, blah, blah, blah. Looks like it goes back to the DS, the original DS. Well, look at the links. It also has GameCube and Game Boy Advance. Where? You see where it says downloadable manuals? Yeah. Oh. It says, yeah. Oh my god. DK Bongo controller. <laughs> Holy shit. There it is. I mean, it doesn't look like it's everything. It's only a few games for each system and a few accessories. Yeah. Only four Game Boy Advance game manuals. A Game Boy Advance video manual. <gasps> Yo, print, th print that out. <laughs> 
Wait, where? For your Tenet collection. Under uh, Final Fantasy VI. Oh. Yo. Oh, where was this? It's an eight and a half by 11 like piece of paper. <laughs> Does it fold? It has it has crop marks for where the fold is. I think. I th I thought that's where you. Isn't that where you should cut it and then fold it? Oh, that's too funny. Yeah. Oh, maybe you're. No, that doesn't make any sense. I mean, these are supposed to be crop marks. I think. I think a yeah. fold mark is different. Um. But no, that's sick. That's freaking sick. Then you can make an actual box for Tenet. <laughs> yeah. Um, do the other consoles have more stuff? Like, does Wii have more yeah, stuff? Yeah, like, I'm on the Wii that has a lot more games. Oh, yeah, baby. There we go. Uh, Super Smash Bros. Brawl. Accessories. It looks like Wii stuff has the watermark. Yeah. That's sad. Oh, stream crash. Ah, there you go. It did the thing I didn't want. Oh, but it's reconnecting. Oh, look at that. Or trying to. Hey, it reconnected. Hey, all right. At least it reconnected itself. I mean, uh, uh yeah, it, it's certainly acting different. Nintendo shutting down Bob again. This is their official website. Yeah. Although we did just start talking about you, making a box for We're tenant, just telling so. you things that they have available to you that they're not telling you about. True. We're like that guy who tells you about all those ways to legally get free money from the government. <laughs> We're the just with telling the question you, marks? Yes. The, 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 the Riddler. The Riddler, yes. The Riddler. <laughs> You know, we're basically just telling you how you can get free instruction manuals from Nintendo. <laughs> there's a there's a uh, uh, a genre of TikToks. Uh, what's a piece of information that sounds illegal to know, but it, <laughs> this is one of those. You can download yeah. box art from from the Nintendo website. All right. Uh, oh, we got uh, nine months from Riccaroni. Bob and Will, every Tuesday, you all are my unwilling drinking partners. <laughs> Good to know. It's a tradition that just can't be beat. Thank you for all you guys do. Cheers. I'm having coffee. I finished my tea and I'm on to my water. Today's a sad day, Will. I, I, I always said that I don't want to do sponsorships with energy drinks. Yeah, and I I said I probably wouldn't do sponsorships for alcohol because I don't care if people drink, but right. I don't want to be that guy <laughs> that like, hey man, here's a twenty percent off for this whiskey, <laughs> and now you have a drinking problem. I don't want to be that guy. Well, okay, I j today I got approached for what would have been the biggest sixty second sponsorship I have ever done. And I had to turn yeah. it down because it was alcohol. Oh. Uh, I'm sad. I don't think it would have been that bad. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. Billy D. Williams advertised Colt 45 malt liquor for years. Yeah. Nobody uh, he blames doesn't... him for. Yeah. That's because he's probably an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> that's why he doesn't care. Look, man, <laughs> Billy D. Williams is just about having a good time. So I don't blame him for. Advertising Colt 45. <laughs> True. Anyway. Um, what is this about EA? Investigating uh, claims that uh, FIFA something or other. Uh, EA is investigating EA gate allegations that employees sold FIFA Ultimate Team cards for cash. Um, just a general disclaimer. This is probably going to involve a lot of like sports games terms uh, that neither one of us are very clear on because we don't play sports games, in particular FIFA. So you um, guys need will... to tell us what uh, all of this means in the chat. We will try our best to get through this in the clearest way possible. The EA Sports FIFA community is in an uproar over a massive scandal in which fans are alleging that electronic 
that an Electronic Arts employee sold highly sought after FIFA Ultimate Team cards directly to players for exorbitant sums of money. Oh. EA said on Wednesday that it is in, in that it that it is investigating the reports. Earlier that day, Twitter had exploded with the hashtag EA Gate as fans shared screenshots of messages from someone who claims to work for EA. In the messages, the a seller offers powerful FIFA Ultimate Team units called Icons and Prime Icon Moments, asking for as much as uh, 1,700 euros or $2,035 for groups of certain cards. If the player, if the buyer agrees, the seller promises they'll add the special units to the player's account the following Monday. Wow. And here is a tweet um, showing uh, screenshots of a transaction going down. FIFA Ultimate Team normally works on a lottery-based system with loot boxes offering virtual cars that players can put together to build the ultimate FIFA team. The more powerful the player card, the rarer it is. Dedicated fans may spend hundreds of dollars on those loot boxes for a chance at a good card to help lead their team. But the card, but the cards this mysterious seller is offering are far better than what most players can hope to randomly find. EA does not EA doesn't reveal the likelihood of drawing a specific card type if it's under 1% and the cards for sale are exceedingly rare. Players who take advantage of this offer would theoretically be able to win against almost any other team even if their opponents had previously lucked out on some great cards from their loot boxes. Fans are understandably upset by the by the idea that a fellow FIFA Ultimate Team player um, may have cheated by paying an EA employee to add units to their account. EA announced on Wednesday that it's investigating the allegations and said it will take swift action if the, if it finds any improper conduct. The company also said it's aware that this situation creates balance concerns for players and that it'll update the community at a later date. Asked for comment, an EA representative told Polygon that it had nothing to add beyond Wednesday's tweet from EA Sports FIFA account. And uh, if they posted the tweet from the EA Sports FIFA account, it says, We are aware of the allegations currently circulating within our community related to FIFA 21 Ultimate Team items. A thorough investigation is underway, and if we identify improper conduct, we will take swift action. We want to be clear. This type of behavior is unacceptable, and we in no way condone what is alleged to have happened here. We understand how this creates concerns about unfair balance in the game and competition. We will update the community as well as get more clarity on the situation. So, uh, Sean, which is in the chat, says, why are there pay-to-win mechanics in a soccer game? I would also like to know the answer to that. That is a very good question. Also, what do these uh, cards mean? What do they do I, in FIFA? I don't know. <laughs> I need somebody in the chat to answer that for me. No, I'm afraid right. if I just Google FIFA Ultimate Team cards, it's just going to tell me about the scandal. <laughs> Uh, Kiki Smee says, less sports, more Atlier, please. <laughs> That's the weeb stuff. Right. Better power levels. The cards are player cards. They make your team. So uh, you're buying a player, basically. I think you're buying buffs for your player. Yeah, is it a buff or is it the player? Basically, it's an online game mode where you make your own team and uh, the higher cards make your team better. Let's you play specific players online. Is this a specific game mode or is this the game mode everybody plays? Uh, no, I think this is I think this is a specific thing. Eric says, how do you play a soccer video game? You got to use your hands for the controllers. <laughs> so that's cheating. S seppuku yourself right now. <laughs> There's a seppuku command in the chat. Yeah. Uh, it's a game mode. Okay. 
online game mode it's the main game mode for competitive online okay that makes a lot more sense why it would be so much money basically you buy the best player cards so you can so that makes a better team and that makes it easier and it's just the player not power-ups seems like it okay so this is this is horrible it's also horrible yeah. that it exists at all that you can get just a randomly generated awesome team like that's fucked up that's right like, i mean fifa people love fifa like the game yeah. i don't know why it's like the best selling game in the world every year i think it's, it's soccer it, yeah it's legitimately just because fifa is like like soccer is popular it's just because soccer is popular and yeah. uh the game looks like it sucks all i hear about it, how i only hear about how terrible it is year after year i never hear yeah. any good things about it uh and this just solidifies how bad this online experience would be um yeah uh do you I like mean, I... pez at least <laughs> <laughs> I've never played of uh, any of these games before in my life, so I don't. I don't. It just sounds like it. It's a terrible time. Yeah, especially because like they're Sims, and like those are needlessly complicated. Yeah, like I've played Madden before. I've played NBA 2K before. I played fucking WWE 2K before, and they're all Sims. So like you have to like know the sport in and out. In addition to knowing like complex button mechanics in order to do anything, and uh, uh, I know that the it, first of all it's annual, so it already the the development time is so short. Yeah, and uh, the Switch version is historically just the same game with a different number at the top yeah. every year. So, uh, so basically. Someone at EA is selling people uh, players. The rarest cards. The rarest for players. So it's, yeah. For their for yeah. them to make a team out of and wreck online. Yeah. For, it looks like, exorbitant prices. Yeah. Yeah. When, Which, when, I, when I was in fifth grade, mm -hmm. I gave somebody $5.00 for them to take our golden eye cartridge and unlock all of the uh all of the all of the what do you call them the cheats the cheats yeah because yeah. if you do certain things you can unlock the you can unlock like big head mode mm -hmm. and then paintball mode and multiplayer and stuff yeah. and then i got the cartridge back and i saw that he beat all the levels in like one second and i was yeah. like oh he used game shark <laughs> we have game shark yeah. I could have just used Game Shark. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, so yeah, this is terrible. This is bad. EA uh, I, needs to fix that. And I, like, it's bad enough that they have like this, because this is essentially what they tried to put in Star Wars Battlefront Two, um, right. before everybody, you know, pitched a fit over it. Um, so it's bad enough that they have this in the game as it is. But I think it, it is worse that somebody is exploiting the system like this. You know, selling cards for thousands of dollars just so that people can have the upper hand. Not just any cards, like the rarest and the best cards in the game. Um, all right, two more. All right. We got Denuvo Anti-Cheat arrives on PlayStation 5's tools and middleware. And uh, this is a little aside from your boy Bob Wolf over here saying, and Call of Duty still doesn't have an anti-cheat. <laughs> Continue. Uh, Denuvo Anti-Cheat software has been added to the PlayStation 5 tools and middleware library. This allows developers greater access to add this ubiquitous anti-cheat software to their games, which will prevent hacking and modding. However, some fans have concerns about Denuvo. The, tools ha the tool has two main purposes. The first is to prevent piracy of a game, and the second is to stop hackers and cheaters from interfering with online games. The PlayStation 5 program only has the anti-cheat functionality. In Denuvo's announcement, the developer says a number of PlayStation 5 launch titles use Denuvo, but did not specify which ones. 
Denuvo isn't without controversy, however. In May 2020, its software removed Denuvo anti-cheat from Doom Eternal shortly after adding it into the game after massive outcry for some players, some of whom review-bombed the game on Steam. Players were concerned about access the access Denuvo had to their computers and any interference in single-player campaigns. Uh, similar issues have been raised about Valorant's anti-cheat software, which was developed by Riot Games. So, Denuvo, it, this is only the anti-cheat section of the uh, part of the Denuvo software. It's not the piracy prevention part of it, but Denuvo, famously, at least in the PC gaming world, um, is a very uh, consumer-unfriendly anti-piracy uh, program, um, and I believe their anti-cheat program is also a pain in the ass for many people. Uh, yeah, I understand uh, the concern. So why would it? Why would it come to PlayStation Five? Uh, I don't know because you know part of the the thing about on console, you know, you don't have to worry about things like this. You know, uh, the, the console is supposed to be like a little bit more secure than than a PC, which is much more open and much more easier for people to like hack and mod and things like that. I just got an antivirus notification. <laughs> they they know we're we're listening, or or they know we're talking about them. Yeah. Um. So they're exclusive to PlayStation Five, uh, and PC, I guess. Uh, yeah. and they're offering it to PlayStation Five developers. Which yes. which uh, is cool, I guess. Like it's cool that I mean I think that there should be uh, uh, some sort of anti cheat like toolkit that developers yeah. can just use, kind of like they have the voice chat toolkit that developers yeah. can just use. Um, and there goes the stream again. Yeah. Uh, so I I think that's good, but uh, the fact that it's only PlayStation Five makes it seem like i mean what what playstation exclusive multiplayer games are there uh as of now what was that destruction all stars true there's that yeah like uh, i mean this is a big deal for like cheating is a big deal for call of duty uh yeah. but this isn't going to solve that problem because that also needs to be across xbox and and stuff yeah so uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how useful this is going to be. Yeah. Uh, Call of Duty just uh, banned like a huge wave of hackers today. Um, yeah. But they still don't have a way to detect if uh, <laughs> you're using cheats in the middle of a game. So like, there's people who have like, like their KD is a 25.0. Like 25 kills to one death. And like those people yeah. are freaking cheating and, and they don't get like put on a list or anything. It's ridiculous. Um uh Kami Thom says, Do we know if this will affect disabled gamers using modded accessible modded slash accessible controllers in games? Uh that's uh, a very good it question. Shouldn't. Cause that's just uh you know, that's just control. It, I think it more checks for like uh computer programming things if like they, that if they're using something like a cronus max like a cronus max has like a software on it that will uh it could counter recoil on certain guns which yeah. is just ridiculous if they're using something like that though to do something to enhance their mobility that might be a problem but if it's right something like a microsoft accessibility controller running through uh friggin uh one of these mayflash adapters probably won't be a problem right um yeah i'm so sick of playing call of duty and somebody just snaps to my face and shoots me in the head like all right dude we get it all right last bit we got an animal cross right. update whoa yeah cool, it's off there's a lot <laughs> coming out and every website like posted it in chunks or not at all. Thank God for Nintendo posting it all in one fucking article. Oh, it's a one-year anniversary. Yes. March 18th. They get a little one-year cake. You get a one-year cake. 
you get Sanrio Sweetness. Add some Sanrio oh. Sweetness to your island. Starting starting March 26th, Animal Crossing Sanrio Collaboration Pack will be available for purchase at Target stores across the U.S. at oh the suggested God. retail price of $5.99. You'll be able to use these six uh, vibrantly designed amiibo cards to invite cute and colorful Animal Crossing residents inspired by popular Sanrio characters to your island, including Rhea, Rita, uh, Chai, and Toby. Uh, f- what, you don't... Hello Kitty doesn't come over? What the fuck, man? That, that was probably really expensive. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you, know, you know what I bet? I know what I bet's gonna happen? Well, Hello Kitty is saved for Fortnite. Whoa. <laughs> you, you, you laugh. <laughs> But at this point, I wouldn't put it past them. They just had a big uh, event today, too. Fortnite. Yes. Uh, apparently, Laura Croft was added to the game, too. And I thought she was in it already. No, I, I, it's... An, it's uh, yeah, she was added recently. She was um, in the cutscene uh, yeah. for the whole event. And it, it like I know Marvel did a comic book crossover with Fortnite. But now DC is doing one specifically with Batman. And I do not approve of that. <laughs> they already did. Do they not already approve. put Batman in it, though. They put Batman, but now they put him back in the game with his rebirth costume. Because uh-huh. um, the previous was Dark Knight and just uh, generic Batman costume. But I, I can't. I don't like the idea of Marvel and or DC using Fortnite <laughs> to sell comics. And I especially don't like when they make the events of Fortnite canon with their respective continuities. Right. Anyway. Uh, anyway, app, custom Adam, designer pro editor. Uh, the custom design app on your Nook phone is getting an upgrade. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I, this wasn't in the article you posted, but Animal Crossing New Horizons players can soon order an in-game Switch Lite console. So in, I did see that. I didn't know it wasn't in this. In the game, uh, you could have a Nintendo Switch item that you just put somewhere. Yeah. You could also have an Animal Crossing edition Nintendo Switch item. Uh, now you can have a Switch Lite one. Uh after arriving this week's first annual update, uh, arriving after this week's first annual update, the Switch Lite will appear as an in-game item available to purchase from Nook Shopping, just like the Nook Inc. Silk Rug before it. This item will be exclusive to Nintendo Switch Online members and comes in four colors, the gray, yellow, turquoise, and coral pink options that are available in real life. Previously, players have been able to order the original Nintendo Switch model, and those who updated the game last fall received a Ring Fit Adventure Ring Con item, too. I didn't know that. (laughs) Really? I did not know that. Okay. Between these and the Mario goodies, it looks like you can go ahead and build your own Nintendo Dreamhouse. Cute. Also, just in time for April Fool's Day... A variety of colors of whoopee cushions can be ordered from the Nook shop between March 26th and April 1st. That is sick. Yeah. So if you ever want to hear your Animal Crossing villager fart, this is how to do it. I definitely do. All right. That's it. Yeah. It's just a cute little update. You're getting a lot of things for Animal Crossing. Seems seems nice. Uh... Animal Crossing was a final news topic? Yes. And you know what that means? Yes. It's time. Quit of the week! Quit of the week! Quit of the week! It's Tweet of the Week time. This is from the Golden Indie, and I forgot what I put. Golden I Idol. The... Yep. I D L E. That's what I said. I. <laughs> I forgot what I put in that I clicked on it before and I left to myself. Um, He says, what the fuck is this? I'm fucking pissed, dude. And it's a picture of what looks like the Wikipedia men without hats. And it's the band men without hats. And he's clearly wearing a big ass hat. (laughs) Uh, 
I mean, I'm pissed too, honestly. Yeah, I that that's that's something you should be pissed about. And there's a reply, just like when finding out how many dudes are in Maroon 5, and there's seven <laughs> dudes. Uh, yeah, why are there seven dudes in Maroon 5 now? I don't know. There should be five. I, I feel I don't I don't even think I feel like Maroon 5 isn't technically a band anymore. It's just it's Adam Levine and whoever whoever can tolerate him for that month. And then there's there's this <laughs> two men and a truck, and there's clearly three men in the truck. <laughs> uh, uh, good times. Oh, I remember that. What it says? No homers were allowed homers. to have one. Yeah, I don't get that. The uh, that was from the Stonecutters episode. Homer is flashing back to like he always wanted to be part of a club. So he's going to see the treehouse and the girl's like, no, you can't join. This is a no homers club. Would you let that Homer in? And she goes, it says no homers. We're allowed to have one because it's plural. Because she, mm. No homers is plural. Mm. All right. Uh, we will talk to you people now. Yes. If you love to comment on last week's Wolf Den podcast over on the YouTube channel Wolf Den Podcast, this is the part of the show where we will answer you. And of course, ladies and gentlemen watching us right now, please start leaving your questions and comments because we will get to them when we are done. Everybody else. So this is all stuff from last week's Wolf Den uh, podcast. Oh, man. Almost uh, slipped. Almost slipped there. Uh, last week we talked about the... Oh, the... the new rumors on the switch on the switch pro wow. yes lemming 77 goad says no offense oh here we go but we you go. two were bang out of order when talking about frame rates of oh, oh, i forgot about this this is gonna be good i don't need insanely high frame rates either but at 24 frames per second the input lag i'm gonna stop you right there <laughs> talk it we're probably talking about movies the input lag would yeah. be unbearable. There's no input lag. That that's a different thing, dude. Not to yeah. mention the camera panning, which is so much quicker in games than in movies. I don't mind you talking about tech stuff without the insight, but it's grating when you're being arrogant about it. <laughs> I don't think we were being arrogant about it. This is a, this is some. I think I I think. We often talk about things that we don't understand anything about. Yes. I, it's part of our shtick. <laughs> yes. I do not understand high frame rates. When you go above 60 frames per second, I am completely out of my wheelhouse because I, I yeah. don't have experience with it. However, there's, I don't, there's certain implementations where 24 frames per second would be fine in a video game. For example, yeah. Cuphead. The camera's not panning. Input lag does not equate to frame rate. It's not yeah. it's not equivalent at all. Um, also, a ga like a game like the Telltale games, or uh, what's that game? Life is Strange. More like adventure games where it's not action heavy. It's more story driven. Things like that can benefit from a lower frame rate. The the, the only way I could see input lag having in a, a, an issue is if the frame rate's higher. You press a button and you see the action happen quicker because yeah. you have more frames. But uh, you're still waiting. Like, there's a couple of frames worth of input lag when, I, when I'm playing a 60 frames per second game. If I press a button, yeah, there's... When I test these controllers out, when I press a button, there's at least eight frames of input lag on a 60 frames per second game. So, yeah, you're already, you know... You already have all that. So if it's a game like a freaking Telltale game or like Cuphead, like I said, um, I think I think you'd be just fine with something like 24 frames per second for certain things. And look at a good example is uh, is uh, the Order 1886, which was 30 frames per second. Everybody lost their minds over it, but it looked yeah. awesome. Yeah, it's freaking awesome. I say drop it down 24 frames per second. <laughs> Anyway, Sean Barrett says, can't wait to climb the Imperial Communication Towers 
in the Ubisoft Star Wars game. You said it out loud, so now it's going to be true. Yes. And when it is, I'm going to find find you on social media and just remind you of it every day. <laughs> Bob, you don't play COD on a 120 slash 144 hertz monitor? Uh, no. I'm waiting on uh, an HDMI 2.1 monitor to exist, and then I will do that. Also, I would like to try it on PC. I hear it's like a much better experience on PC, but uh, I don't got the room. It's a million gigabytes. Yeah. Melon says, Bob, I keep getting Twitch notifications every week that you're streaming something called podcast, but I can't for the life of me find it. Where can I get this game? I'd watch you play on stream, but I don't want spoilers. Um, You can get it from uh the app called apple podcasts yes and and you make sure you rate it five stars yeah um nico a says people that want 1080p screens aren't really focusing on the fact that games on switch are sometimes 540p (laughs) 720p games handheld are very much okay but because some games can't reach that people are complaining honestly i just want a better chip that could handle 720p handheld consistently with good battery life if i get that then i'm honestly set for life because that's really all that matters when i'm playing handheld resolution matters far less compared to texture quality and art style i think we're in the same sort of spot that um the playstation 4 is versus the playstation 5 like uh um, yeah playstation 4 was trying so hard to target 1080p 60 but not many games did yeah the switch is trying so hard to <laughs> hit 720p in portable mode and uh yeah. maybe the switch pro will be able to nail that just like the ps4 pro did um that's all we can hope for is a steadier and more and 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 you know more accurate uh 1080p or 720p yeah all right emily van engen says someone tell me why i think it's cute when bob says something is cute it's it's uh what's it because look at him look at him (laughs) this is like the type of guy who thinks things are cute on a regular basis what's it called uh it's contagious yeah is what it is the cuteness is contagious all right that's all the comments we pulled from last week. Now we're in the chat. Yeah. Bob, what should I buy next? Mario 3D World or Mario Maker 2 says Goose. Those are two very different games. Yeah. I'll ask you this. Have you played 3D World before? If you have played 3D World before, uh, if you haven't played 3D World before, I will say definitely get 3D World. You will definitely enjoy that. Uh, if you think you might like Super Mario Maker 2, you should get Super Mario Maker 2 because that game will have a lot of legs for you then. I encourage Bob to Google if frame rate means less input delay. He's going to feel embarrassed. I I understand that um, the the action will happen quicker on the screen if there's a higher frame rate. I understand that. But the action is still going to happen whether you see it or not. Does that make sense? Am I making sense? <laughs> not every game needs to be fucking Ozu. You know, not every game needs to be uh, uh, some try hard bullshit. Yeah. Uh, hey, Will, was that jacket you were wearing at the beginning of the podcast a Boba Fett one? Uh, yes, this I took it off because I was getting a little hot. But this is my Mark Echo Boba Fett hoodie. Mark Echo, for some reason, had a line of Star Wars hoodies that I can't put on right now for some reason. Uh, you had a line of designer Star Wars hoodies. Uh, the best one was the Boba Fett one because when you zip it up all the way... It does this.
It helps if the headphone <laughs> isn't part of the part of the zip up process. So just give me a second. This is this is great radio. I, I have the uh, the stormtrooper one. There we go. There it is. Hey, look at me! I'm Boba Fett. I'm Can the you best bounty hunter in the league? You can't see through that, right? Uh, that was you, worth it. You can't see through that, right? I can. Oh, it's a black mesh. Oh, like that. that's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, you can see through it. I've actually had to walk around like that in public once because it was so windy and it was like freezing against my face. I zipped all the way up and I was fine. So, uh, yeah, good on you, Mark Echo, for making a great ass sweatshirt. <laughs> I have the um, I have the stormtrooper one. It doesn't zip up all the way. And right. it has an ugly ass <laughs> like stormtrooper <laughs> design on the back. It is very dumb. Yeah. Uh and I used to wear it all the time. And I don't know why. Yeah. It was very no stupid looking. For me. That is much better looking than the than the yeah. uh, stormtrooper. They also I wish I got it when they were so they had like a a rebel fighter jacket, like an X Wing pilot jacket, and it was awesome. But I I missed out on that. It's probably going for a lot on eBay. I did. I do remember that. Uh, hey, Christopher Nolan is in the chat. Oh, he shit. Says, he says, hey, Bob, shut up and watch my movie on the big screen with surround sound like I fucking asked you to. <laughs> um, no, I don't want to go anywhere. If I Christopher saw Nolan like... asked me to watch his movie, I would watch it. But I would not go to the movie theater to watch it. I would just watch it. I saw somewhere that he actually, they started reopening theaters in Los Angeles and he was one of the first people in line to get a ticket. That was today. That article yeah. came out today. And I so and he, I retweeted it and said, nah, dude, I got you. You don't got to go anywhere. <laughs> I saw that, yeah. Uh, Tiny Carrot says, Will, do you think Zack Snyder's Justice League will be good? Isn't it out? Thursday. It's uh, out on Thursday. I think, I've, I've maintained this from the beginning. I think it will be better. But better does not mean good. <laughs> because the ultimate edition of Batman vs. Superman is better. But that does not make Batman vs. Superman magically good. <laughs> so I maintain, like, I'm going to go in with an open mind. I'm going to see it. I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt. Um, but I cannot guarantee that I'm going to come out of it like a converted man. Hey, uh, uh beat em ups. Thanks for the raid. How, how oh, was your podcast? Oh, Our shit. podcast is doing just good. Yeah. So many bricks. That's like his, that's like his thing. It's the last that's of us. Cute. It's the last of us thing. Oh yeah. Cause you kill people with bricks. It's a whole uh, thing. Thanks for joining us. We were just, I was just trying to say that uh, frame rate has nothing to do with input lag and everybody in the chat is mad at me. <laughs> yeah. Um, yep. I Listen, I will, I will, I will uh, look deep within myself and I will come out of this a better person. Um, anyway, we got Chris BX says major Japanese distillery offers you a sponsorship and an all expenses paid trip to Japan. Let's not. Let's not make me feel worse <laughs> about denying an alcohol sponsorship, okay? Yeah. Uh, Bob is waiting to announce the rate. What? I, I announced it. I was waiting for Will. To, I was waiting for a good... We're doing a podcast. Yeah. Hey, Bob, Tanuki or Cat Mario? Uh, Tanuki. The 1,000% Tanuki Mario. Yeah. I mean, if I'm playing Bowser's Fury, then Cat Mario. But, I mean, overall, I like Tanuki Mario better. Hey, Bob, when's the next vid? Thursday, if all the moons align. Because I'm doing it with wood. But, I, yeah, it looks like Thursday. Yeah. Uh, a while back, you were considering creating fewer videos to lighten the load. Would you think about doing instead something more loose or unscripted like the backlog videos were? Uh, the backlog videos didn't do good. So right. so AJ of Fanatics 4 has started to do um, 
unscripted like stream of consciousness stuff and he says it really lightens the load you know because writing takes up way too much yeah time. oh yeah i am i've been trying to find ways to just outsource uh work so that i have more time and it does it hasn't been working at all um i don't know i i don't th th i think the things that i do in my videos uh i mean the last couple of videos i did uh they were a lot of work but i was able to spread it out over a couple of days so i've actually been able to sleep but um uh yeah the, the the things i think that the things that i do in my videos it helps to have things scripted out although this next video is completely unscripted so <laughs> <laughs> uh i don't know i i yeah. i i i'm, I'm kind of just playing it all by ear i guess like an editor yes uh, i have e who edits uh, who does like assembly edits and i have or he does more than assembly edits and i have ian who uh will sometimes also do some assembly edits um but i end up giving them a shit ton of notes and it ends up being as if i'm just editing the whole video myself so um it's 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 hard to find a balance between me yeah. working on the video, Ian, who will sometimes edit, but mostly Minecraft. Exactly, Metacentric. Yeah. Uh, hey, Brooksy, thanks for the Prime subscription of two months. I appreciate it. Uh, Edward Bova, so what do you think about a victim of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic's effect on movie theaters, the beloved Alamo Draft House has filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. It's a heavy question there, Eddie. I think it sucks, especially for Alamo Draft House, because I was like the only movie theater that I like to go to because you can eat there and yeah. stuff. Um, I think that movie theaters were going to die anyway. <laughs> so this is just like speeding up that process. What I don't understand is movie studios and, you know, especially the directors who like work for the studios always trumpeted how important the theatrical experience is and that we have to maintain the theatrical experience that that was basically what Christopher Nolan was going on about. What I don't understand is, though. All the major movie studios regularly make movies with budgets of $200 million. So why not, instead of just making one of those movies, you pour money towards the movie theaters that need them for the time being? You know, it will only, you know, you only need to do it for a year, maybe two. And hopefully that will be enough to keep movie theaters afloat until we're ready to go to the movies again. We don't need you to spend $200 million on, on a fucking reboot of something we never cared about in the first place. <laughs> it's going to if make they, its money back, that, that the Snyder Cut. I'm not talking about the Snyder Cut. <laughs> I'm talking more about things like Tom Cruise's The Mummy or, you know... Things like that, where they spent an exorbitant amount of money on something we clearly did not want, um, rather than just, you know, they could have used that money to funnel it towards a movie theater. I think everybody's got budget issues right now. Yeah, no, they do. But I, I feel like, you know, the movie studios had the money to just put it directly into the theater's uh, bank accounts, and they chose not to. And that says a lot to me that tells me that they don't really care about the theatrical experience i don't think they should i think they should <laughs> care a lot more about the streaming uh uh service look i'm not gonna lie there is something magical and fun about seeing a movie in a theater especially if you're with your friends yeah um but at the same time convenience and you know low price wins out all the time and it costs me $20 to rent Bill and Ted uh, Face the Music to watch with my wife at home. Whereas $20 would have gotten me one and a half tickets at my local multiplex. So I can't 
you know, I can't fault people for going towards the streaming ser- streaming route. That's totally acceptable in my eyes. I get it's going to be sad when theaters go away, but, you know, this is what happens. This is what happens when you, you know, have shitty business practices for a long time and, you know, something comes along that completely uproots your model and we find a better solution. We're going to stick with the better solution. Um... Louis Bick in the chat says, Bob killed movie theaters by putting Tenet on a Game Boy. <laughs> that too. <laughs> you got people like, you know, us doing stupid shit with Game Boys and movies. Uh, Kiriako says, uh, it just sucks because movie theaters were pretty much the only arcades available in the suburbs. That's most just, of them that have, is a good point. Most of them have pretty bad arcade games, though. Right. I mean, every once in a while, you'll find a time crisis, but... <clears throat> Yeah, the time crisis machines have been uh, hard to find. Yeah. Uh, Brooksy, with a decent TV and sound equipment at home, the experience won't be that different. Yeah. I, it's, I, I do think there is something special about going to the theater with a bunch of friends. If it's like a big like uh, you know popcorn movie, like a Marvel movie yeah. or something. Those are the only movies that I've seen in theaters like recently. Yeah, or even like, you know, because I used to go see like, you know, smaller films, more dramatic films, you know, it would just be me or my wife or like, you know, a handful of people. And and th- that was a good time, too. And I was a big advocate for going to the movie theaters by yourself because it's a different experience that way. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, times have changed and it's people need to f- accept that. There's a talk shows and podcasts category. Should I have been on, streaming on that this whole time? Maybe. On, on Twitch. Uh, we'll have to find out next week. Thank you guys for hanging out. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us as always. The Wolf Den podcast is every single Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put an archive version of it up over on our YouTube channel, Wolf Den Podcast. So you can subscribe to that and check it out on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well because this is also an audio podcast on on anchor.fm slash wolf den podcast and your preferred podcast service of choice apple Podcasts, spotify google play wherever no matter where you get your wolf den podcast from though please be sure to subscribe rate and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms don't forget if you want to uh ask say thing you could just leave a comment on the youtube upload of this sh- of this thing uh, and then you can tell me how bad my opinions are on frame rates. Uh, uh, so I'll have a video up on Thursday. Uh, more streams. I'll have a stream on Thursday. I don't think I'll have a stream tomorrow. Uh, and that's it. Thank you for hanging out. Everybody who's watching right now, stay for this raid. Jackson is on a podcast. Scootish is on a podcast oh, with this boy. guy, Jiggy. Uh, and I think it'll be really funny if you all go in there and say hi. Okay. Uh, And we'll see you all later. Goodbye. Bye.